Okay, one thing I like to do on uh, my uh, some of my shad patterns, my bluegill pattern, is I like to put a little chartreuse on the tail, just to get a lot a little thicker. If you look at certain bluegills during the stages of their growth, they will have a little bit of chartreuse back on their tail. So this time I'm using. Uh, Color Coat 2O Chartreuse number 5806. Now I said we were going to paint some other ones and then do that green, so I'll go ahead and put just lay down some chartreuse color on it. Do a few of those. You really see the difference uh, between a bait that's pearl and a bait that's white, the difference in the chartreuse that comes up. So when you're painting, always be aware of you know what your background is on your bait or something. I think we'll paint one of these big uh, bass assassins too. Stripers out on meat are starting to school pretty good. I don't know if they'll eat something this big right now because the shad are still kind of in the the fry stage, but we'll give it a shot. Okay. Now if you noticed on some of these tails I tried to leave a little white on them. So now I'll get that chartreuse going on it. And that thing will flicker in the water. Most we'll probably put a little bit of attractant in it. Now that'll all really pop once we uh, clear coat them. You can see that. Even though we had green, it still covers it pretty good. Once you uh, start painting, you'll get used to that you use certain colors on certain baits. And when you do that, you can have all these baits set up and I mean I can paint a shad here or a chartreuse shad or just a chartreuse bait but I'm coming back and I'm doing this so I've got these and I can just keep going where I keep using all the color on the different baits and just keep working it until I'm basically done and I haven't really wasted any paint. Nice little chartreuse tip on the tail of that should really flash when we get them in the water. Gonna put a second coat on it real quick to really make it pop. I don't know if Wheelworks is still in molds yet, but they've got they've got some nice baits. Uh, I don't know if you can already buy them poured like this. But I know they do sell all the Plastisol and, and, and different dyes and stuff for the Plastisol. So you can basically, you know, go to the next step if you're not already doing it and uh, pour your own plastic. And uh, hopefully here in a couple of weeks, we might even get into the point where we're uh, 
we'll show you how to mold them where you can make your own baits and then you uh, you know you pour them and stuff with your different colors and then come back and entice them a little bit okay all that chartreuse gone so let me clean this guy a little bit quick. I like to add a little bit of color uh, to my baits and you know over the history of time black and purple have been your mainstays for any plastic worm so they make some real good iridescence and uh, pearlescence so what I'm going to do is I'm going to accent this bait with basically a, a purple pearlescent. You don't really need to add a lot. I don't know if the camera will show this, but once that clears on that, like I said, that's going to pop. So we'll get a little bit of purple going to it. All we're doing is just a few passes, just so I start to see that purple pop up. But you still see the green, the lat lines, and everything else, so. Really not taking any of the purple. So we got those done. Okay, the next thing we'll do is because, you know, bluegill, bluegills, whatever that area, uh, I'm going to use this blue pearl. Um, so 5821. And not going to put much in there because we're not going to need much. Once again, I you know always test my bait or uh, brush to make sure it's clean. I can go light or I can go dark. Now with a the bluegill, they've got the dot and stuff. So what I do is come back where I think the gill is, or and I just kind of put some blue in there. I don't overkill it because this will actually come out better in the water stuff. I don't know if you can see the blue and purple, but it's starting to take shape. Yeah, I think these little satis sessions are really going to catch some fish. You know, so are these uh, lure work shad. I like those too. That's a really nice shad. There's a lot of shad on the market. I can't wait to fish these. There's a lake over in Utah, a reservoir called Sand Hollow. And I've just caught some monster fish over there on a bluegill pattern. Another thing blue pearl is good for, and keep it back, is I like to put an iridescent blue, sorry about that, an iridescent blue into my chartreuse and stuff. It's not going to be something dark, I'm just going to, I'm holding the bait way out. So when this show, starts turning the water, it gives a blue but that chartreuse is still there. Couple more drops to do these other two baits. Basically, okay, so we're just kind of dusting this to give it a a little bit more unique color. Now, let me clean the brush again. <laughs> 